I, I, I did find some, some, some elements of common ground. Um, for, for example, the speaker referred to the limited value of public propaganda campaigns, and I certainly agree with this. There was some reference to um, what is sometimes called the information deficit model and its weaknesses, and I certainly agree with that. And all, all around uh, this area, there's the whole question of the difficulty of communicating in relation to the, the highly complex issues that we put under the heading of sustainability. Um, and, and that's one of the places to come in, really, is, is an acknowledgement of the complexity um, and a realisation that, well, where, where, where do we really go with this if the model that is being used by the public of sustainability is doing a bit more gardening, doing a bit more recycling? Because if that really is the model that is out there, then I think there's, there's a huge gap between the ways in which the public model the issue and the ways in which um, members of different communities engage with sustainability think about it, different communities being research communities, NGO communities, activist communities, public policy makers, etc. Et so I think we've got to, that's the first thing I would point to is this gap. Um, and then the question arises, well, how, how, do, how do we actually cope with the gap? How, how do we try and close the gap? Now, uh, one of the things that uh, I noted with, with the presentation was that on the one hand there was a clear engagement with um, descriptive activities and explanatory activities discovering how people behave and, and why they behave. I also noted quite a normative tendency as well in that there seems to be a lot of suggestions about the ways in which the public should behave in relation to this thing called um, sustainability. Now personally I don't have a big issue with normative orientations. I, I think it's important that we engage with them. Here, here we means the academic research community. However, at the same time, I think it's important that we be clear about what we're actually doing here and where we're going with it and what we, how far we really want to push a particular normative approach. And, and that's one of the questions that, that I've got, so a more general one in, in relation to Patty's presentation as well. How explicit is your normative um, approach to this and where are you really going with this? So that's quite a big question but I think it's also the sort of question that many people want to, to be discussing, not just in relation to this one paper but more generally to the so-called sustainability agenda. Okay, now m m moving more closely into the paper, um, the, the question I ask, as I say, coming from a, d a very different perspective disciplinary wise, um, what is the model of the actor? Um, now one of the models of the actor that I frequently bump up against, forced to work with, is the so-called rational actor uh, model, which is largely based on assuming that human beings are uh, motivated by interest, self-interest, financial and economic issues, and this is the way in which to make policy interventions, is to appeal and, and work with, with interests. That is often criticised as being a very truncated view of, of human beings and human societies, and that we need a much wider view which brings in, for example, things like values, brings in things like belief systems, cultural orders, and so forth. And, and, and I did notice some references to, to this in, in the paper, but I, I was slightly struck by the way in which, for example, environmental values were, were being in, addressed, and they were actually put under the, the heading of barriers. I, I noticed some commentary as to what you actually meant by putting environmental values under barriers to transformative action, but I still found it a little bit puzzling as to, to why you were, you, you were going quite down that road. And that brings me back to, to the, the bigger question, which is, well, how, how, do, how do we build up our model of the actor? What really is the actor anyway? Here is the individual human being, but we might say the real actors are rather different. There may be communities, there may be organisations, or the main fact be, um, complex systems involving human and non-human actors. So wh wh where really is the actor? Um, and, uh, um, so so may maybe the, the presenter would, would like to um, um, talk a bit more about where he sees things like values, belief systems and so forth. Um, f from my pr uh, a further observation I make is that the individualistic model has placed great stress on habit and even automaticity. And that raises the question of choice. Has the faculty of choice disappeared? Now, I do want to make some caveats and prudent remarks in this area. 
how do you actually approach choice? It's a hugely complex area, and I don't want to immediately take on board a particular ideology of choice, which may be fantasist. In other words, sometimes we're, we're told that we have a lot of choices, when in fact perhaps we don't. <coughs> and, and, and that connects with a, a wide range of, of debates here. One in relation to the availability of a range of options. Is, is there a range of options out there in inverted commas that we can actually identify and select within? Do, they, do, the, choice, do the options exist on the one hand? And on the other hand, do we have the capacity of choice? Now, the capacity of choice could merit quite a long discussion, and certainly philosophers people of different ilks will talk in very different ways about what we understand by the capacity of, of, of choice, but, but, but just to use the phrase to, to, to get it out into the open, as it were. Um, so, so what is the capacity of choice? What is the capacity to select between options? And who is really making the, the selection? Um, now, I think there's a lot to be addressed at that level. Um, my, the way in which I interpreted the paper, perhaps wrongly, um, in my own biased way, is that the capacity of choice is being moved upstream from the individualist perspective to some other level. Um, and there are two things there. Well, there are some political issues always when you, when you do that. But the other thing is the ambiguity of, of, of the level to which it's being moved. I, I, I didn't really understand where you were moving the selection of choice, uh, the capacity to, to make choices. Now, sociologists talk a lot about agency and structure, political scientists likewise. I did notice some brief reference at the end to this. That's the way I interpret your bit on upstream. That I, there's probably a reference to the so-called agency um, structure debate. But um, I was struck by the fact that you didn't move very far upstream. There, there are plenty of sociologists, political scientists, soci etc etc who would move a lot further upstream than for example the congestions charge in, in London that, that, that to me does affect behavior clearly but it's not moving very far up the the um, the, um, the range of socio-economic and technological systems that we actually operate with to to to, to, to work at the, uh, to use those terms um, so if if the selection environment is rather different and if the agents who make the selection haven't been identified, where does that leave us in terms of, on the one hand, questions of legitimacy, because I think in political terms, and also in questions of coherence, that is to say, the, intrin the intrinsic coherence of the model. Because on the one hand, it seems to be saying that people don't really have much choice because of their automaticity, but on the other hand, they must exercise their choice for normative reasons related to an environmental ethics. I think that's really what you're saying. Now, I don't necessarily disagree with that, with the fact that there's an environmental ethics that we ought to engage with. But I, I do wonder quite how we manage to uh, recombine a strong stress on behavior understood as repeated action and automaticity and an ethics based on choice. So I just wonder where that, that really goes to. Um, th then to um, round off, because I, I do know that, that, that my time is limited, um, at different points in the paper, in the, in the abstract, there was a reference to interventions and, and even to successful interventions. And, and this is part of my point that I don't quite understand who is intervening, on what basis, why they're doing it. I, I, I noticed that you had the DEFRA segmentation model and that dates, if I remember correctly, from about the mid-2000s, when, when, when Labour seemed to be moving along a particular behavioural track to, in relation to sustainability and climate issues. And there's quite a lot of discussion about that. And I think we, it might be useful to open up that debate. I don't have time, but perhaps others might want to go into that. Um, to me, it was a particular moment in, in the discussion of how do we conduct sustainability policy? How do we conduct climate policy? How do we get the public involved? But the, the answer seemed to be, well, we do it in a fairly top-down fashion, actually. It's a kind of re response to bottom-up pressures, but conducted in a rather top-down manner. It's the way I read that particular phase of, um, of um, DEFRA and, and, uh, under the Labour government. But there's a lot more to be said there, and I acknowledge that. But what, what I come back to is, is the question, who is really the agent here? Who is really exercising agency when it comes to making decisions over 
sustainability understood as we will. So there are some yeah. thoughts. I'm very happy to, um, and thank you very much for your, for your insightful comments. And, and I, I, I'm afraid I, I, should not, I should not take you know, the, the rest of the, of the time because I would like to have the, the audience and, uh, say in it. Let me, let me just pick out a, a, a few things. Um, first, first of all, I think, I think the, 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 in, the interesting question here is who is the actor, I think. I think that that's a very a good point. By the way, um, our, our intervention study was uh, funded by DEFRA, so, so apparently DEFRA wants, have, has an agenda. Um, but who is the actor? I mean, there, there are, and, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a debate that we can, can have a, a, a lot. Uh, on the one hand, okay, but if I stick to, to the habit um, uh, theory of the habit analysis, there, there, there is there is the notion that habits are sort of, you know, that, that are kicked uh, into, uh, are kicked, are elicited by the environment that we that that we behave in. So, so the transfer of control to the environment, to the cues that, that are around us. So, eight o'clock, we, 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 we immediately just, uh, get into our car. We don't think about any alternatives. It's it's sort of structured in in the behavior uh, uh, environment that we are in. So, on on the small scale, the the, the there is there is a there is an argument to say well okay our 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 choices are limited by by the fact that we have our choices made um, habitual. That's of course not not completely satisfactory. Although there there are there are um, there are psychologists who who actually claim um, take a very extreme uh, stand in this, and they they really claim that 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 all the all uh, all behavior is automatic, including our conscious choices. So that's that's an extreme position I will not take. But but I think for me as a social psychologist, it, the in, the interesting area is where is if we go a bit further from the individual and and if we go to to look at the structures around an individual and the larger structures that you refer to, um, and and the first port of call for me is what I sociologists call social practices, and much behavior is, are, are, are embedded in, in larger practices, which, which are also, of course, in terms of change, very, very much more difficult to, to, to change. If you, if you want to change, the, I mean, let's say showering is, is a very good example of social practice. We, we should, you know, 30, 40 years ago, people maybe took a bath once a week, and now people shower twice a day. So that's, that's, that's a social practice that has changed. Um, but I think it's, um, let's say, the, the, the sociologists are, are taking over from there, as far as I'm concerned, and, and rightly so, because there is, um, uh, th there's a very um, important debate going on in terms of the, the, the more, the, the larger scale changes and changes that might be, uh, uh, occur, that might occur in terms of um, the, 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 the sociological perspective on, on behavior. And I, I, th I think that's, that's a debate that we that we certainly um, uh, need to have. Um, in terms of, th there are there are certainly, um, I would say, very naive ideas about choice and about who the actor is and, and why people are, are behaving the way they do among politicians. I mean, um, uh, the, the whole nudge uh, agenda, um, nudging is a sort of buzzword. That the past, the past few years, uh, David Cameron, I think, has given his, his all his cabinet members the the, the, the book, the Dutch book, and um, um, and I think that's that is a very naive idea of behavior and behavior change um, to to say well we can we can we can we can change the the architecture of of the choice environment easily in order to make people change behavior. I don't think that's um, that's very viable. But I would love to, to hear some more comments from the, from the, from the audience. I think you're right. Great. Thank you very much, Bess. And I didn't say a chance to say thank you very much to Joe as well. I have at least one question waiting. Is there anyone else waiting at the moment? OK. Uh, when you um, speak, can you say your name and where you're from as well? Because obviously we're, we don't know each other. So well. um, thank you very much to both of you. Uh, my name is Mark Hudson. I edit Manchester Climate Monthly, so I'm one of the activists. My technical question is, are you going back to measure those people who changed their habits, the ones who moved into their house recently, 
to see if there's the rebound effect and they're rewarding themselves for doing their recycling by taking the flight to Barbados. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My broader question is, all of your examples of habit were about consumption, and what would fall under carbon literacy. I was intrigued that there was nothing about habits of civic engagement, going on demonstrations, writing letters to the newspaper, submitting Freedom of Information Act requests, etc., mm -hmm. which only weird train spotters like me do. But surely if we're looking for transformative change, it's going to come at least as much from citizenship habits as consumption habits. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was fascinating that you, you didn't even mention that you weren't going to mention it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, no, and that's, it's fair, fair, fair enough. Um, um, by the way, in this, in this study, um, we did include um, uh, some of those behaviors. So, so, so engaging with the community, uh, engaging with, um, uh, with groups that, that uh, want to, uh, to engage with, with behavioral change in terms of sustainability. So, so we, did, we did look at that. Um, um, however, I, I also uh, immediately would, would say, well, there was very little uh, uh, found in that respect, we 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 really we are really looking at 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 a, a sort of sex, a cross section of the Peterborough population, and and you were very disappointed to see how prevalent those kind of behaviours were. Um, having said that, there are people who are engaged, and, and as I say, well, that, that that those are those are actually the the, the the kind of people that should carry this agenda forward. Um, in terms of um, uh, longitudinal effects, you're absolutely right. This, we, we unfortunately we have not not the, the opportunity to, to to follow this up, um, but I'm pretty sure that lots of these behaviours will will actually be offset by by flying to Spain and perhaps. Um, so yes, I mean that that is that is one of the uh, challenges that behaviour change uh, uh, approaches should should tackle, and I think that's actually a, a, a very important one for the for the. the intervention agenda, so to speak, how to retain behavior. Hey, um, I'm Emilia Melva, I'm at the University of Surrey and Bureau Hapov, which is a engineering consultancy here. Um, I'm just interested in this question of choice happening at a collective or an individual level. So there's a kind of daily habit consumption choice, and then there's a how do we have choice in changing the more structural mm -hmm. systems and engage mm -hmm. with that. Um, yes. And I think there can be a lack of any forum or space to make a collective choice. And that's a kind of social dilemma element in that as well, because if I don't believe that everybody else is also going to be doing more sustainable behaviour, why would I bother? But I've also got no place to go to try and make those changes with other people. No, but I, I, think, I think you're right. I mean, I mean and, and, and there are... Uh, there are quite a lot of initiatives and groups uh, around where, where, where you can go to. But in a more general sense, I think for, let's say, the, the lots of behaviours that, that we might be interested in to change, let's, let's say commuting and so on and so forth, um, is, they're very much restricted by, by what's available and the infrastructure. I mean, if, if you go to, if you, if you have to pay um, an awful lot of money to, to, to hop on a train and you can't even get a seat, you, you, you cannot expect that people are are are, are, are doing that. And it's 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 so lots of behaviours and uh, are restricted and, and maybe promoted by better infrastructural measures. Um, it's it's about what is available in in supermarkets. Um, it's it's about sometimes pe people are not um, are not having any choice. I think this is more also about the kind of. Um being a like, citizenship participation yeah. rather than the consumption, and there's that kind of top-down thing, but there isn't the closing that loop of a top-down intervention to encourage more participation yes. in citizenship. I mean, I, I, I completely agree with that. Yeah. I would, you know, why is the Green Party still never you know, a, a growing party? I, 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 would, I would love to, to see that, and I, 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 I really think that there is yeah, there's there's some, and I think sociologists may may have a a better take on on this. But I, I think there there is certainly um, uh, a gap, if you, <coughs> in to to use your words. And, uh, Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I'm Jennifer Hall. I'm a 
Uh, yeah, in the fourth. Um, you were starting by, by expressing your um, your disappointment uh, that uh, we are doing or trying to do deep inquiry rather than uh, moving towards uh, a rapid action. Uh, and then, in the course of your talk, uh, you were saying that most people are not interested. Is not the very question why? most mm. people uh, are interested, not interested, mm. I mean, uh, one that urgently needs uh, 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 inquiring. And secondly, uh, you were, uh, towards the end of your paper, talking about the small group that should carry the flag of hope. And mm. uh, what makes you believe that against the obviously significant resistance of the majority who is not interested, that that small group carrying the torch or whatever, uh, that that will have more effect in the future than in the past. Mm -hmm. And moving on from there, Joe was talking about um, uh, intervention uh, being managerial and Joe was asking questions of legitimacy and uh, uh, Joe was also asking where do the norms actually come from or what are mm -hmm. the norms uh, which inform mm -hmm. uh, intervention. And I think one could add to that uh, intervention and, interv uh, and nudge approaches are very commonly perceived as patronizing and mm -hmm. they actually trigger resistance. Mm -hmm. And so intervention may on various levels, I was wondering whether you've got uh, mm -hmm. uh, something to say on that, it may actually trigger the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, because the way in which we, I mean, you were referring to the web page, um, you get our, th that's one of the forms where clearly resistance uh, is immediately triggered. But in general, nudge approaches, uh, I think, uh, are uh, top down interventionist approaches, mm -hmm. managerial approaches. Um, and again, doesn't that require. Mm -hmm. So, how much scope is there for yes. rapid action? Well, and I mean, no, that, that's absolutely, it's, it's a very, very important question. Um, and I, 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 okay. The easy answer is I'm, I'm, I'm just a social psychologist investigating behaviour change. So, so that, that's, that, that's, that's not, that's not a very, uh, <laughs> very bold kind of statement. No, but I think, I think personally, and that I, because there, there, there's a personal view coming in. Uh, I think, I, uh, first of all, I, I've, I've never been a communist, and I never want to be a communist. But when it comes to, 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 to the environment, I think there should be a top-down. Uh, process. Uh, I think there should be a very sm that smart people should um, should should uh, invent smart technologies. Uh, bold politicians should take bold measures. And and I think when we do that, and then I think psychologists can really be play a good part in um, in working with um, the, the let's say the, the the citizens that might not um, initiate those kind of behaviors. And I think I think. There is a, a genuine. I have hope. I mean, there is. For instance, if you if you look at other areas, that let's say the smoking ban, there was there was a lot of resistance beforehand. You said it's never going to work, and and it works everywhere, very very well. Uh, it's it's a matter of showing the way, but in a in a in a, in a good way, not not in a patronizing way, in a sense of you know you 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 should do it in a, in a good way, and I think. Introducing smart technologies, for instance, is, is a very good way to, to do things, and people will, will, will adopt those technologies and actually um, be, be happier than before. So I think it's it's a matter of finding finding the right way to do it. But in in essence, yes, I would I would say we have to do this. I think it's 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 already almost too late, and um, and we need to have radical action in this in this case uh, on this agenda.